go. All right, may I have your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Our program is about to begin soon. Hello and good afternoon, IB to everyone. My name is Michael, and I'm currently a language teacher in SJKC for you too. As the representative of my school, I would like to welcome all of you to our program today on the topic, conservation of our planet from zero to hero. So before we get started, I would like to go over a few things, few items so that our program will go on smoothly. First of all, I would like to gladly remind everyone to turn off their microphones to avoid the disturbance to the presenters. Besides that, you will have the opportunity to submit your questions to the presenter today by typing your questions into the comments and also the chat box in YouTube Live or Zoom. You may send your questions at any time during the presentation and we will collect all your questions and address them at the end of the presentation. Last but not least, this is very important. A quiz in the form of Google Form will be administered to, uh, to all of you at the end of the session. E-certificates of district level will only be issued to those who manage to score 70% and above in the quiz provided. So good luck in answering them. So before we start our program today, I would like to invite our organizer of this program, Mr. Muhammad Zamri bin Jamaluddin, who is currently the Deputy District Education Officer of Students Development Sector in Johor Bahru to officiate our program this afternoon. Mr. Zamri, the floor is yours. Terima kasih kepada Tuan Moderator, Cikgu Michael. Yang berusaha Guru Besar SJKC Funyu 2, Puan Lu Chun Huang. Yang saya hormati Tuan Speaker yang dibuat khas daripada Universiti Teknologi Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Fadil Makdin, Pensyarah Fakulti Kejuruteraan Awam UTM. Baisan Jantan Kuasa Program, Guru-Guru serta murid-murid yang dikasihi sekalian. Pertamanya saya ingin mengucapkan uh, tahniah kepada semua warga SJKC Funyu 2 di atas inisiatif dan kejayaan penganjuran program. Ini dapat memberikan manfaat eh, ilmu berkaitan dengan keleserian alam sekitar di mana murid-murid berpeluang untuk melibatkan diri secara aktif dalam kegiatan co-curriculum secara dalam talian. Tanya juga kepada para peserta yang hadir pada petang ini Walaupun uh, pagi tadi sudah pun eh, terlibat dengan PDPR yang mungkin agak memenatkan tapi tahniah kerana masih lagi uh, ingin menyertai uh, program kelestarian alam sekitar uh, yang dianjurkan oleh FUNYU 2 ini. Saya dimaklumkan uh, bahawa para peserta adik-adik nanti akan menerima eh, uh, CJ penyertaan peringkat daerah di mana adik-adik uh, perlu menjawab kuis terlebih dahulu. Jadi uh, saya ucapkan uh, selamat berjaya kepada adik-adik semua. Dengar dengan teliti apa saja yang disampaikan oleh penceramah nanti dan buat catatan eh, supaya kita dapat menjawab kuis itu nanti. Eh. Saya sangat bersyukur eh, di atas komitmen yang telah ditunjukkan oleh SJKC Funyu 2 dalam mengungguli Uh, kelesarian alam sekitar ini di mana banyak sebenarnya kejayaan-kejayaan yang telah dibuat oleh SJKC Funyu 2. Ini sebenarnya menjadi contoh kepada sekolah-sekolah lain supaya dapat mengikuti jejak langkah yang dibuat oleh Funyu 2. Kita di Malaysia amat komit, eh, amat komited dengan mempertahankan kelesarian alam sekitar yang merupakan usaha dunia dalam memerangi kesan pemanasan global. Antara kesannya sekiranya kita tak mengambil tindakan untuk memelihara alam sekitar kita, kita akan mendapati bahawa berlakunya peningkatan suhu dunia, kecairan, kecairan bongkah ais eh, di kutub dan kemudian ribut taufan yang ekstrim, peningkatan aras paras laut dan berbagai lagi masalah. Ini sudah pun kita lihat eh, dalam beberapa tahun kebelakangan ini. Jadi 
untuk memastikan generasi anak-anak kita yang akan datang dapat menikmati hidup di dunia dengan secara sempurna, maka kita perlu di peringkat awal ini uh, mengambil tindakan yang sewajarnya dalam memastikan berlakunya kelestarian alam sekitar. Jika anak-anak menonton, melihat melalui Google dan sebagainya, kita akan dapat tengok eh, bahawa berlaku ber- pelbagai kemusnahan. Di negara kita pun pernah juga berlaku, contohnya di Tasik Cini, eh, di negeri Pahang, di mana uh, ekosistem flora dan fauna kita telah pun musnah kerana diteroka secara besar-besaran eh, tanpa ada pengawalan. Ini tidak boleh kita terima eh, sebagai seorang uh, individu yang mempunyai tanggungjawab terhadap, terhadap uh, alam sekitar untuk memastikan kelangsungan hidup generasi akan datang maka kita perlu mengambil tindakan yang drastik menjaga alam sekitar ini. Okay. Oleh yang demikian, bagi mengelakkan perkara seperti ini berulang daripada masa hadapan Anak-anak kita yang pada hari inilah tahun 4, 5 dan 6 pada hari ini yang ada mengikuti program ini Mereka lah sebenarnya semua sebagai pemimpin dan generasi masa depan untuk melindungi dan memelihara alam sekitar yang merupakan khazanah negara Saya ingin mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada uh, doktor yang sudi untuk bersama-sama dengan pelajar-pelajar Berilah ilmu yang manfaat kepada pelajar-pelajar ini supaya mereka dapat menjadi uh, pemimpin masa depan eh? terutamanya dalam memastikan kelestarian alam sekitar uh, apa saja ilmu yang dapat dikongsi berikanlah mereka ini akan menjadi orang yang uh, berada di barisan harapan eh? sekiranya uh, mereka lihat uh, sesuatu yang tidak uh, tepat, tidak betul berlaku uh, melibatkan negara kita Malaysia Tuan-tuan dan perempuan, saya tidak mahu berucap panjang kerana penceramah sudah tentunya uh, mempunyai lebih banyak input eh, fakta-fakta yang menarik yang ingin mereka kongsikan bersama dengan pelajar. Semoga selepas program ini tamat, anak-anak bukan saja mempunyai kesedaran alam sekitar tetapi juga dapat mempraktikkannya dalam kehidupan seharian. Contohnya, eh, seperti menjimatkan tenaga elektrik di rumah, Eh, mematikan sisi lampu sekiranya tidak mem- diperlukan Kemudian memastikan barang-barang elektrik tidak dibuang eh, Merata-rata plastik yang kita gunakan uh, Tidak kita uh, lupuskan dengan cara yang tidak betul dan sebagainya eh, Itu semua adalah tanggungjawab sosial kita eh. Saya rasa itu saja daripada saya Saya nak ucapkan tanya sekali lagi kepada SJKC Funyu 2 Di atas uh, uh, tindakan mereka mengungguli eh kelestarian alam sekitar ini. Mudah-mudahan kita semua mendapat manfaat hasil daripada apa yang telah dilaksanakan oleh pihak sekolah ini. Sekian saja daripada saya. Tahniah sekali lagi dan terima kasih kepada semua. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you Mr Zamri for his enlightening speech. Next, I would like to invite all the participants of today's program to turn on your cameras and screen for the photo taking session. So let's invite Mr. Jared for the photo taking session. Mr. Jared? Oh yeah, I'm here, Good afternoon. Okay, so afternoon. Uh, everyone to turn on their, their cameras, okay. And can you not share the screen because I, I need to, uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, for a moment, yeah. Last one. Okay. Okay, you can put your times up. Okay. So.
okay. That's all. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jared. So before the presentation begins, allow me to introduce our presenter today. His name is Dr. Muhammad Fadil Maddin. He is one of the professional engineers in practice from Institute of Engineer Malaysia and Board of Engineer Malaysia related to water and environmental engineering. He is also one of the key researchers in transforming the agenda of sustainability in many fields of expertise. He also assisted in the research work in the biotechnology, water and wastewater technology and environmental science and application. Thus, this sharing today is to open up the critical challenges, future works and predominant activity that could bring the best impact even for the small contribution. By joining our session today, you will be able to encounter the most basic understanding of conservation, protection, and securing our planet in a sustainable way. Without further ado, Dr. Fadil, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to our lovely moderator for today's session. And I would like to say, uh, also share appreciation to Mr. Zamri, who actually officiate this uh, session for all of us. So, uh, I we do hope that uh, this is something like uh, uh, very good for us to be here uh, because we are here as from zero to hero. So. I do hope that uh, this um, program will benefit not only to the student but also to all of us because we are actually stay in one planet. We don't have any other planets. So thank you very much for uh, this kind uh, invitations. Uh, especially I would like to uh, express my gratitude to Mr. Alistair who actually engaged me from the beginning. And uh, thank you very much to SJKC for you to Johor Bahru who actually try to make it a kind of transformation and a little bit contribution from a small part uh, on the sustainability. So uh, this is a session who actually not really giving you the, a lecture. So this is not about the lecturing you guys and this is not also to give you a very new things, uh, sophisticated to remember. But you must believe me that Um, there is some technical problem. Dr. Fadil? Dr. Fadil, are you there? Dr. Fadil? I'm sorry, there is some uh, technical problem with the, uh, with the line now. So please wait for a moment. Let's give Dr. Fadil a moment. Can you hear my voice right now, Mick, uh, Mr. Michael? Yes. yes uh, so I'm so hear. sorry. I'm so sorry. Yes, Something yes, yes. suddenly it's uh, annoying because maybe there are some kind of networks there. Anyway, okay. I will shall continue. Okay, because it is a momento to, to give a kind of, you know, uh, motivation and something that to trigger our audience here, right? Okay, never mind. I will uh, next to the what with the topics is all about, right? Okay. I think everybody knows about him, right? So he's quite uh, active and a very brilliant person, right? And he's actually tried to uh, give a kind of different perspective on universe. 
if you someone actually listen to him few years back uh, he already established many things about the black holes about some uh, other dimensions uh, about the world something like that but the most interestingly uh, from him even he is okay right he is not really uh, like the ordinary people but he is okay but his brain still functioning and he try to make sure that what's the, the the most impactful that we are trying to dangering our uh, our planets like for example we are so greedy and stupid because we want to explore as many resources that we have and we are not actually trying to make sure that it's sustained in the future and that's the reason why we still increase our contamination and we make it our population is not sustained in that design way so this is something like um, he try to make it the creating the intention by others if you are fulfilling what's the requirement supposed to be in our world in our planets okay that's the the the, the most important is that we have to listen and we have to uh, make sure that we meditate in order to understand what he try to portray in terms of that philosophy and because of that uh, if you look here of course uh, um, this left picture and the right picture tell us that oh yeah uh, in 20 years back 30 years back our planets for example uh, especially in malaysia those actually stay in rural area remote area especially in sabah and sarawak of course they are enjoying those biodiversity enjoying the rivers flow enjoying the waterfall right but what happen if we are not really taking care of our planets it's not only because of okay we have to take care on the big city but place thing only in our household in our home what we have to contribute for that if we still think smaller even smaller for today even this, the, the the things that uh, we never know what we can contribute uh, to make sure that our planet is sustained in that way but please think please do think that what we are actually producing generating from our house for example like rubbish right so do we actually separate that properly or do we actually try to make it some recycling on that portion or do we actually planting something in our yards in our you know uh, somewhere at our backyard for example or are we actually try to uh, motivating others people or promoting the uh, sustainability lifestyle to our neighbor for example do we actually practicing it maybe right now we only focus on health issue like we, we know that covid-19 and that's the reason why you are in here virtual online and you are having that kind of online classroom for example but sustainability is not an up or even not even uh, we actually uh, facing those kind of pandemic it's supposed to be planning right so in other worlds in other country not only in malaysia there are so many other option and opportunities that looking towards to the sustainability maybe we can have a look few examples maybe you can have some imagination what the people's creatively innovatively doing and also try to make sure that their society and community is working very good okay let's see this is something like very familiar but remember there are some cities actually use waste to make it as a payment It's very interesting right and even in indonesian city something they are using waste in order for them to be as a fees and they can travel like for example two hours uh, by providing that coupon for example and in istanbul also right they can exchange plastic waste to make it the transfer credit for their fees something like that and many other things and even sydney also have their own high tech exchange recycling i think in uh, kuala lumpur also have something something like something like that but we have to look how sustained they are are we actually supporting these things 
And the most important thing, will you swap your plastic to something very relevant? So this is something, the options of people thinking creatively, how to make sure that our waste to become as um, uh, income, to make it another profit for another aspects, right? It's so not only uh, uh, focusing in terms of waste itself, but we are thinking that nowadays, waste become as our resources. Please eh, remember, because people use the term waste means that you have to throw. Waste means throw dispose something like that but nowadays the shifting mindset means waste is resources resources for what there are some kind of entity that maybe we can use as for payment we can use as the income generation and many other things so we have to look this pedagogy this kind of analogy in order for us to understand okay now back to what i already shared to all students, right? And maybe some of you already knows that uh, we're having this uh, sustainability in many ways. So now, this is some refreshment to audience, to, to you, to student. Please go to this website, like www.slido.com and key in the pass key there. Right, four five eight five one eight, and you're supposed to be guided uh, to join uh, in order to make it uh, the benefits. Uh, what exactly we can um, starting something on that particular thing. Please, I'm waiting you guys uh, to make it uh, something uh, useful for me. Uh, if you know anything. Uh, because the keyword here for you, for everyone, is, is it any keywords or element that maybe you are thinking right now based on my, uh, uh, you know, sharing just now, in the few minutes just now, and relates it to su sustainability? What you are thinking about that? I want you to hear from you guys. Uh, so if you can put these things... Uh, and make it this available for everybody. I do hope that you can join right now. I already opened the, the poll and make sure that uh, uh, I'm receiving a few. Yes, I saw many others coming. Uh, please join. Uh, I will share with you guys uh, what exactly people thinking. Uh, let me stop this file first. Okay, then I go to this. Okay, right. So uh, please, guys, eh, those audience who still uh, try to activate their slide, uh, Slido, please go to the slido.com and enter the key, the pass key, that the five four five eight five one eight. Because I want to know what exactly in your mind, if you can thinking about any keywords or element that maybe you think that it is very associate and very correlate to sustainability. Okay, I saw over here, I got uh, waste become resources. Yes, great. Right, conservation. Uh, what, was, what, what, what else? We have environment, solar panel. Great. We have uh, plastics. We have eco. We have environment. Oh, yeah, we have that one. Reduce waste. Yes. Do not throw rubbish. Yes, uh, we have innovation. Oh, of course, we need the innovation. Wildlife conservation. Yeah, thank you very much for actually sending that kind of list. We have, uh, what, what, what else? Uh, what, what else here? We have anonymous. Okay, maybe anonymous means everything, anything, right? Okay, green technology. We have, um, what else? Uh, I saw something very interesting that I do, what? I do care, something like that. Uh, economic growth, yes, yeah. save the earth, plastic can recycle, environmentalism, yes, uh, good, hello, yeah, hello is also maybe sustainability also, yeah, no worries, you can put anything, any available keywords, maybe very interesting to be shared with us, but I saw that the biggest, uh, you know, keywords here is recycle, recycle, 3R, 
Okay, uh, still the 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 keywords keep coming. Thank you very much those actually participating this refreshment uh, to other people. Well, you are very active. I that's the reason why we call it as an active poll. Okay, no problem about that. But once I uh, you know um, look into this kind of uh, pollings uh, from you guys from uh, students, right? So you know that recycling is does a matter. It does a matter. It's quite important for us to be as champion to be as conservation of our planets and because this is the reason why you are here because you want to be as from zero to hero because you want to be something you want to be somebody because i do believe that you are actually have the imagination to become as superman to become as the iron man but you are not super powerful like that but you are super powerful to be as zero to hero from the sustainability aspect. So you have to bear in mind, you even you are not become a superhero, but you are superhero to our planets because you are practicing this recycling, reuse, three R, and everything's about recycle. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is one of the. Um, one of the major component that I would like to share. Thank you very much uh, for sending your message to me that you need this. You must ensure that uh, this sustainability element must complete with recycling. Okay, I will actually explain later on what exactly your element and why does matters it to you. Why it is very meaningful to many of you. Okay, the first thing, the first thing, why you are putting that keyword and element? Because thank you very much to our teachers, to our lovely teachers. I do, I do think that this kind of keyword is coming from your teachers. They are already teach you to recycle something, right? To be as uh, making some waste, to be some resourceful, to be as some kind of material, to be as we call it as upcycling your material. So that's the reason why you are putting the recycle there. But anyway, today is about to make it the di other dimension about the recycling. What kind of re uh, recycling maybe we can think and we can connect towards to the sustainability. So maybe at the end of this session, you will get the answers. Okay. Anyway, I try to uh, bring you to my institution. I think that many of you already visit UTM, University Technology Malaysia. And this is the reason why uh, UTM is among the biggest campus in Malaysia. One, eh? one biggest campus, and we've been occupied, and we've been planted at least forty percent of our campus with green area. It means that we even have the palm oil trees, we even have the secondary forests, and even we have a wildlife in our campus. I will explain later on to all of you and why this kind of uh, wildlife is uh, very important for us even it sometimes become as uh, our vandalism to, to all of our asset and infrastructure. But never mind, they are actually one part of our occupant. <laughs> they are actually our tenant also. So we are with them. So how to make sure that we understand their habitats and how can we make it the management between this kind of flora, fauna and our uh, stakeholders in our campus. I will explain later on a little bit. Okay. And of course, most of you, when I said about the sustainability, the first thing that you are ever thinking is about the recycling. Why you are thinking about the recycling? Because people always mislead. Mislead means that they are misjudged that sustainability should be in environment means under E. But you have to bear in mind, sustainability is not only conserving our planets, not only protecting our planet or other things like in the environmental sectors. No. Sustainability means you have to associate with the society and economy. Together, the ultimate goal is environment. What we are being teach before this is to think beyond of the society and economy directly to the environment. Why? Because we can see the environment, we can view, we can watch the birds, we can view those kind of rivers and everything. That's the environment because you can 
sense. You can feel it. But remember, sustainability is before we can end up to very good environment, you must sustain your society. You must ensure your economy is good enough to make it a location budget. For example, in terms of improving something, to do some synergy between uh, uh, school one, school two, and other school to be together, something like that. or monitor your management, or to make it some innovation, right? So, the end, as I mentioned earlier, whatever you are thinking about sustainability, equivalent to environment is not equivalent to uh, environment. Sustainability is equivalent to society, economy, environment, all together. It means this is three pillars. So, please ever think this uh, this uh, beyond to what you are ever been taught before but this is most the important things when you are planning something in your school if you have some kind of projects you want to bring your project very good in terms of protection the environment you have to you must also think about the society it means community it means people you have to think about that, right? And economy means, of course, the income, of course, the um, uh, some other solution in order to create uh, the opportunity of job, for example. So this is the sustainability. Okay, all right. Okay, that one is too philosophical, very, f uh, uh, you know, uh, too philosophy, too fundamental for you to understand. Now I bring you all in reality okay in reality once we want to understand about the sustainability we only have one thing to remember this is actually our uh, referral our benchmark in order for us to contribute to do some activity in sustainability we call it as SDG so SDG mean sustainable development goal if you go to YouTube, if you go to any kind, in any kind of promotional about the SDG, you can have millions of promotional items. But what I would like to uh, share with you guys, because you as a school kids, you already in school. So you're supposed to contribute in school in order for you to have the mindset what you want to contribute back when you become uh, uh, some matured people or you be a somebody else in certain organization later on when you graduate something like that what you have to do and this is one of the things that if you go to one of the website they call it as GSMA so this GSMA is something like you can uh, voice out what the things you want to voice out about your environment, about your economy, about your society in your local context. Like what I already uh, uh, share with you is someone from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, even they having some problem to access the pure water, the clean water, for example, how they put their voice in that particular platform so the world listen to them because they are very poor. They cannot affordable they are not even get single or clean water to access for example so what they have to do so this is the platform for them to voice out what they want to do so guys students here please go to this one you can make it your own voice out especially in water in uh, air pollution in uh, river in energy anything it's about that so this is what we call the sdg in action and we also have a lot of platform for you to contribute even during the pandemic sometimes you cannot go to visit the place but you can voice out by creating a multimedia creating the video for others to listen it to you so we call it sometimes nowadays people um, manage it as a tiktok for example right but that tiktok is more social this is only for, uh, you know, have a fun. But this is to be serious. You have to be so serious because you have to protect. You must be as a champion, right? So you must be a serious, but in a very uh, leisure things because people want to uh, capture what's your 
uh, needs, what your help, what the help that you need from the group, for example, from the community. So this is something uh, maybe you can uh, practice, and I do hope that uh, uh, many from SJK uh, SJKC few uh, uh, you, uh, to contribute more in the global aspect, right? And this is something like on the SDG, because student after this i'm going giving you a pop quiz something i think you have to be ready right now right so but before we go to the pop quiz so this is the icon this is the label that very transparent to everybody we cannot change even for example if you look over here we have a sdg1 until sdg17 the logo the color the shape still the same to make some understanding what we should achieve what we have to do right so each of sdg they have their own indicator those indicator is to make sure that those people who are very actively in the sustainability uh, means part of the environmental uh, action plan so you have to know what exactly the targets for each of these, for example, if you look, the first SDG mean no poverty. What does it mean by the no poverty? In Malaysia, of course, uh, maybe you can say that maybe there is no poverty. But since pandemic, maybe we increasing numbers of people who actually very poor. We never know that things, right? So we have to do something. What the action that we can help there? So SDG have the indicator that we have to follow something, right? And as well as the zero hunger. So zero hunger, people very mislead on the zero hunger. And this is what I would like to share today. Zero hunger doesn't mean that you just give food as or food bank to the people. Like for example, maybe the student get the excess of food. But we need to balance with nutrition. Means food with nutrition means you just not giving them food but you have to give them a very nutritious meals in order for them to grow bigger to grow brilliant something like that so zero hunger doesn't mean only on the quantity but also on the quality so this is the approach on the sustainability under the sdg and it also goes to other sdg right so i do hope that uh, guys students and everybody here Please look carefully to the SDG. The SDG is not designed for anybody because SDG for everybody. So this is the reason they have a tagline. They call it as no one left behind. And this is who actually own this SDG. Nobody own this SDG. But the SDG is a guideline, is the guidance for us to follow. We have to make sure that we fulfill this kind of element and criteria. So that's the function of SDG. So it means that you cannot say that SDG is only for the federal government, only for the top leaders. No, they can only plan. But in order to execute, to make it the real reality, so it means that everybody must be there. So this is the SDG and I do hope that uh, in SJK, C Fuchu can do this kind of project and program to the student especially to approach on localizing the SDG and what we already practicing in universities is something similar to that it means that we engage with the you know your brother and sisters in universities they already have their own program on that so this is could be one of the important aspect okay now it's about the pop quiz so are you ready guys? I will open the pop quiz. So now ready with your uh, gadget. So I will open uh, the pop quiz. So please make sure that uh, you are ready with the second device. Okay. Let me open. Wait until I give you a signal. Alright. Uh, Okay, now please go to Kahoot application uh, or you can type uh, kahoot.it and just enter the 
pin over there. Eh, four four seven one five one four. Please come on, come join us. Right. So uh, over here, I saw that we have uh, how many? Uh, we have at least eighty. Yeah, uh, numbers of student. Please uh, join. I do hope that many are. Uh, we have already 30. Yeah, come on, come on. So, yeah, keep coming, right? 46, 47, 50, 55. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. You are so active today. <laughs> I do hope that uh, by uh, listening to uh, some prelude, some introduction on sustainable development goal can give you something, right? Because this question supposed to be under the higher education, but I try to uh, reduce numbers of questions and also the level of or the complexity of the questions. I do hope that it can give more benefit. Wow, I receive more than 300. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Keep coming. The numbers is very increased very fast, right? Please, guys, okay? This Kahoot will, uh, you know, you supposed to be very fast as well as to be so quick uh, so this is the reason why a kahoot is designed right uh, maybe we can reach to 800 i'm not so sure because now at the uh, session we already have 600 uh, i think i do believe that if already it can reach to 800 right wow okay so you must be so steadily with your gadget because once i Click the button on start. So the question is pop up from here. Then your answer is in your gadget. You have to pick very, you have to choose very fast and accurate. This is the reason why we are doing Kahoot, right? Wow. I never know that it is reached more than 800 now. It comes to 900. Wow. There's so many other <laughs> students who are enjoying these things, right? Reach to almost 1,000, maybe? 1,000, 1,000. Ah, come on, come on, 1,000. Yeah, we reach 1,000. <laughs> All right, uh, I have to wait. Wow, this is 1,000 uh, participants. So I'm not so sure whether we can cope these numbers in another... Uh, you know, platform, uh, maybe 2000, <laughs> I'm not so sure. But keep coming, please, please do very fast because I don't want uh, the rest is keep waiting for us, okay? Otherwise, uh, it is maybe uh, unfair to others who actually waiting for us. Maybe once it's reached to 1200, 1, I have to stop and we just go to the start, okay? All right, okay. I call, uh, I uh, count, eh? 10, eh? From 10, then I will click start button, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Okay, I have to stop. All right, go to start. I'm so sorry, those actually try, eh? but this is the, the first question. The first question, right? SDG is 10 for, please. Quick, 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 quick. Come on, come on, guys. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Finish. Okay. Uh, we only have uh, about uh, uh, maybe few hundred here because we have a thousand. The answer is SDG, Sustainable Development Goal. Means this, right? Okay. We go to the next one. Okay. Are you ready, okay, guys? One, two, three.
three. Okay, who's actually the first rank? Yi Zin. Congratulations to Yi Zin. Okay. okay, next. Second question. How many goals in the SDG? Come on. I already put it there. How many goals in the SDG? Right, this is very interesting. Uh, wow, it's only a few hundred. <laughs> we have a thousand people, but few hundred only managed to that in 10 seconds. So it's 17. Okay, so who's actually the leader? See, now change, right? The leaders change. Tan Zikai. Okay, Tan Zikai already there. Uh, so you're the first place here because the faster, right? You are maybe the, among the fastest. Okay, the next question. Are you ready? What is the aim of this goal? Okay, this goal. SDG 1, no poverty. What's the aim? What it means, the aim. I mean the goal for that particular SDG 1. Come on. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes, the goal for this SDG one is end poverty in all its form everywhere, right? Means uh, 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 only 241, correct. So who's actually the winner now? Johnson, okay, thank you and congratulations to Jess Johnson for these questions. The next question, number four. Which of the following is not part of the SDG? Which one is not a part? Oh, they just make it faster, right? Because they just put it there. Whether it's correct or not, it doesn't matter, right? They try to put it as fast as they can, right? So which one is the not part? Not, eh? Not. I mean, uh, it's incorrect. Okay, the not part is provision of internet services for all. Means that SDG is not to provide internet, okay? Means uh, only 226 people. And who actually? Za Zio Ying. So Zio Ying, you are the champion for this question. Okay, next. Ready? Number five. The SDG are designed for? Uh, so the SDG is designed for what? Okay. Which, which? Uh, this is very simple but tricky. Right? Uh, I put it, this is maybe a few more seconds because Maybe there are some words you're missing over there. So maybe more than 15 minutes, 50 seconds. Okay. <laughs> all right. So the answer is all countries, both, uh, both rich and poor. Means any, any countries in the world, right? Okay. So who's actually still Xiao Ying? You are the most... Uh, uh, maybe uh, the champion Be because I will skip few question right I will skip on that okay the next question the image show a crop icon uh, what's the image is is about this SDG what is the specific goal uh, okay it means this is for the partnership for the goal okay okay who's Wow, still Xiao Ying. Wow, Xiao Ying is quite uh, fast and very, very sharp. Right? Right. Okay, quiz. Okay, I will skip uh, this question. Don't, don't, don't answer these things. Eh? Don't answer it. I will skip this. I will skip. Okay, I will skip. Okay, I'll also skip this because we don't have much time for this. No problem. No worries. I will skip this. Okay. What is the icon for goal two? Zero hunger. Okay, please. Zero hunger. Goal two. Which one is the the suitable icon? Okay. This is the zero hunger means this icon, right? Right. It's a bowl, something like maybe noodles. Okay. Never mind, I will skip few things, but let's see who's scoring. Wow, still Xiao Ying and coming with the new uh, student, right? I will skip few, uh, few questions. Okay, but this is a double point, so I will not skip this one. Please. Okay, each goal is supported by how many targets? How many targets are in total? 
targets, right? Targets. Yeah. How many targets? Right? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. It's supposed to be 169. Okay, so 800, 180 uh, students uh, appear very nice. Okay, now Diane. Diane is the scorer, the top scorer. Okay, I will skip uh, this. I will skip. Eh? Uh, no worries, I will skip this. Don't don't answer this question. Don't answer it. I will skip this question. Okay, I will go to the next one. Next. Also, I will also skip this. Skip this. Don't answer. Don't answer. Don't answer. Next. Okay. 13. Okay. Please. Which one is the following? It's not true. Okay, please, which one is not true? You have to make it. Okay, I'm still waiting, but I will also click the skip button over there. If somebody else, because this is something you have to refer on the, uh, you know, the right, the, 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 the written uh, documents there. And also there's some kind of words. Maybe you have to remember whether this is the correct word for that particular SDG. So... It's still ticking there. The clock is ticking there. So which one is the most not true about the SDG? Come on, you still have 10 seconds. 9, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, the correct answer is binding international treaty in all nations are required to follow. Okay, this is something very, you know, uh, tricky. So that's the reason why I put it more uh, time for you to think, right? So it's about 297 people correctly answer the things. And who actually the top scorer? Still Diane, okay? The next question I will skip. Okay, next question I will skip. Don't answer that. I will skip. I will skip. Don't answer that. Just don't don't put anything. Eh? Don't put anything. Okay. I'll skip. Okay. Next. This is also I will skip. Don't push your button. Don't push any button. I will skip. I will skip. Okay. I will skip. Okay. Next. Okay. As a student, which one among this goal is likely considered the most appropriate to practice in your school? Uh, please choose uh, because this is related to school. Okay, so which one is the most appropriate? Okay, so the answer is either is in climate change or zero hunger. Both can be. Okay, no problem if you choose two things also available but if you choose only one also good no problem but let's see who's actually the top scorer gan wei jun congratulations to gan wei jun okay okay i think that's all so i will end the quiz so let's see the first place the third place is xiao ying congratulations xiao ying the second is dayan and the first Who's the first? Gan Weijun. Congratulations to Gan Weijun. And we also have a runner. I'm not so sure the, the name, but I have a full report. But this is uh, our top scorer for those uh, numbers of questions. So congratulations for the winners. Okay, so I will shall stop here. Thank you very much for participating uh, uh, the things. And uh, we can have uh, the next uh, you know sharing i uh, still i can maybe have another 30 minutes to complete i hope that i can manage to complete by the time all right so i may skip few kind of element and you still with me all right you still with me eh? please promise me you still with me okay okay i will skip these things and many things but what i try to make sure that you will understand we already listened to SDG. You already joined 
the quizzes. You already know that, okay, SDG is something like we can contribute, we can do some practices, this is our part of our lifestyle, and maybe we can also motivate our people, our, our friends, our neighbor to be as like that. Right. So, uh, how? But the, the problem and the bigger questions, biggest uh, importance issue for us to bring over here in this session is how and what kind of impacts that we targeted for that. So one of the uh, uh, elements that may be close to your heart, may be close to your daily life is solid waste. Solid waste means your waste that you are generating from your own household. Like for example, food waste, your plastic bottle, your uh, plastics, your bags, your uh, electronic waste, something like that. This is also a solid waste. But in order to do these things, how we can participate? So especially in UTM, like uh, one of the higher education in Malaysia, and we also sharing this kind of ideas to other universities, to other schools, that you must use the smaller contribution of solid waste management even you don't have only depends to your management to do that kind of solid waste it means that you have to do by yourself like separation your waste how many uh, of you already here in this platform already separate the waste how many of you still practicing it until today i think we still count that one right but you you can do the separation when the event when we're launching something, but we are not in our DNA, not in our blood. So this is the things that we have to do, practice, max perfect. So this is something very close to us, right? Okay, this is something, uh, uh, a few things that I would like to share with you. Once uh, we do some kind of uh, projects on, uh, you know, uh, uh, on waste management, waste activity, and we are a bit interview with one of uh, uh, you know TV station how we practice in our campus how we actually deliver the things so from here you can see that I, I can make it uh, bigger things so this is something on uh, you know a sharing session with those uh, audience with the publics how we translate how we do a practice on living laboratory means we are translating our food waste especially because our food uh, waste composition is about 40 to 50 percent so how we do that one and i do believe that in your school have that one but the biggest question here is how to sustain the project how to make sure that people do and practice every day without hoping something coming to them right some of them is actually only work for that project and activity when they have some rewards when they do have a kind of uh, certification but if they don't get any certification or any rewards, do they actually continue it? So in this session, we are actually giving a solution. Okay, all students, all teachers, if you want to know how to do that one, how to sustain the things, maybe we can have another session. But this is one to give it a kind of overview, what we should do and practicing it in our blood, in, in means in our lifestyle. So this is something that we are engaging very closely with our people with our students and with our uh, other uh, other people something like that okay all right i think from our uh, uh, opening ceremony from mr zamri he already explained about the plastic right and i do believe that many of you that already practicing about the tumbler bring your own tumbler bring your own container to your school right your, your mother your father your parents already put your you know your breakfast your lunch in the uh, in a container in the tumbler and you bring to the school that a practice in a school right but sometimes you are don't even bring the uh, the container what you have to do you just go to the canteen and you buy from the canteen and in certain canteen school uh, school uh, they already provide this kind of biodegradable for single-use plastic what does it mean by the single-use plastic it means that the plastic material that can be used only one time like for example what the the, the types of the single-use plastic like mineral your uh, plastic bottles right mineral plastic bottle that one is a single use even your cutlery those uh, forks and spoons something like that so this is also uh, the single-use plastic but 
how to do that one. Okay, I want to show with you some videos that are already produced by our students in the campus. Okay, this is a situation, right? This is a situation where the student they buy something. You can see they use the bags, plastics there. Even smaller one, they still need the plastic, right? They still need the the bags. See, provide again and again, right? They don't even bother the things, right? See. Okay, can you count how many plastic they use in a day? How about in a month? See, this has happened. How about in a year? This is something like this. This is a very true situation, right? So even uh, they're asking something from the canteen. Right? You can see there what they are doing. No packaging, right? The beverages they ordering tea tare, tea something like that, or iced tea, whatever it is, single plastics, right? All this is plastic, plastic, plastics. Okay, and then another one is a bags, right? See what happened? They also ordering more plastics coming. See? So, now it is the reason right now to see the situation. What happened if they use, they bring their own bags. Like bring our bags to our uh, uh, supermarket. Uh, if they want to buy something, they bring these things, right? Okay? I think that's all. So, what the lesson learned from this situation? It means that we can contribute. Your contribution is say never to plastic. You say that we already bring our own bags. We already have our own utensil and tumbler and everything. Right? So do this and practice this one. You already hero. You already as a champion. This is very simple things that you can bear in mind. This is what you're supposed to do and practice. Okay, I will skip these things. I think we don't have much time on this one. I will back if we have a much time and I will back this, right? No problem. Okay, because I have many other videos to show it to you to give you a kind of uh, visualize what exactly the activity should be. And I do believe that I already know that all students, school children, you already have your own motivation to do this kind of activity like what we have, what we practice, like clean our plates, earth our uh, plant and conserve and car free zone and we do have a food drive, a beach clean up, something like that. So this is some of the project and program that we already created and the most interestingly is this scooter, e-bike. So we already promoted inside our, our campus to engage and to motivate students. Don't use their motorbike, don't use their car, but use this scooter, the e-bike, the e-scooter, in order for them to mobilize from one point to another point. So this is something that we have to be in our mindset. We want to conserve, but we don't contribute. So if you don't contribute, how come you be as a hero, as I mentioned earlier? Right, so let's see. Ah, this is what uh, I already mentioned to all of you. Right, this is what we have in our campus. You can see if you look to this uh, website www.inaturalist.org, go directly there. Then please find the words of UTM Biodiversity. We already identified about four hundred. 41 species with 300 identifier means that the person who actually very actively uh, uh, mostly is actually student do that kind of activities and we have about almost 2000 I think nowadays is already increased 
more than 1,800, maybe more than 2,000. This is only inside our campus, only. Can you imagine if we are making bigger scope in uh, somewhere in Skudai, Johor Bahru, or maybe in in your school even? Even uh, this is actually to capture flora and fauna, to capture birds, to capture fish, to capture the ants, uh, to capture any kind of insect even. This is something on you to make it that you understand. Don't worry even you don't understand or you don't even know what kind of species there. You just capture there, then there are some kind of features. You can click there, then they can give you some suggestion. Someone from the other, uh, you know, the other country will give a correct answer for you. So this is very interesting. Do these things and make it joining this kind of inertries and you become as hero in biodiversity so this is something what we can do and we can practice right this is already been done we already try to make it in our you know uh, promotional items to our university to our student and we also provide a rewards to our student those actually uh, can uh, upload uh, the most uploader so we can give 300 ringgit the most uh, species they can be identified 300 ringgit and the beautiful photos the, the very authentic photo we can give 300 ringgit so this is the initiative that we created to the student and the benefit is actually this identification these databases will be captured by global so it means that if you want sjkc fuchiu 2 to be in a global identification of this i naturalist please join it and then please register your school means everybody will go and they will oh see that in your school you have this kind of insect you have this kind of bird something like that it doesn't matter so it's good for you to create the awareness okay so means that get involved more get more people to be in your uh, project even it is very small as i mentioned as also our moderator said that even a small project is also impactful please do please not waiting others to to, to motivate you you can do by yourself don't wait others to you know initiate the program you can initiate the things even it's been replicated by others it's already been uh, doing by others no problem because sustainability means replication and duplication right so this is the things that i would like to make it you understand about the sustainability and this is one of the project on the low carbon i think uh, this is already been promoted by irda iskanda uh, uh, malaysia and is about on the society to be as a low carbon society i think this is more fundamental for everybody so please look into irda website you can find very easy and even some other uh, local authority also producing this kind of material to the school maybe you can have a lot of brochures and pamphlets flyers available on the low carbon lifestyle but i don't want to repeat this thing but i just want to give you very uh, simple things whatever you are doing even it is very small like even you bring your shopping bags is also contribute to low carbon lifestyle this is one of the things that you have to bear in mind why you have to be contribute in the very small practice or activity okay this is very uh, i think uh, very popular uh, most of the universities most of the school also doing the same thing saving the energy saving the air conditioner uh, saving the light whatever it is doesn't matter but in utm we also practicing one hour you have earth hour right but we are practicing one hour during the lunch time please switch off your fan switch off your icon this is also contribute to our uh, low carbon lifestyle for example okay this is one of our uh, projects uh, but not in utm yet but this is in utm kuala lumpur uh, sorry uh, let me show it to you okay okay this is uh, one of the solar panel that we have please look carefully if you go to utm uh, you can find this very very nice one so means that this is solar panel with the shading and under the shade there we can park a car come you park your motorbike something like that okay this is the facts on uh, how many spaces that we provide 
and thank you this is already uh, already been implemented since five years ago already five years ago and still operating until now and this is the carbon that we already reduced and it's powered about 420 homes it's very small but impactful right uh, this is uh, the things that I would like to share hopefully we can enjoy and we can do same in your school all right okay uh, a few uh, four slide a uh, few slides that I would like to share with you but the most interesting right as I mentioned it to you in UTM we have uh, 40 to 50 percent green areas and what the activity that we provide to the student is planting the trees when we planting the tree we actually try to offset the carbon uh, so this is one of the activity that we did for a few years ago and even for the new student who actually uh, starting with university we give them one uh, trees one tag it means that uh, they have to tag by themselves they have to plant in the campus so until they uh, graduate they can see those kind of uh, uh, trees is growing well or not so we already do this kind of practice uh, in 2016 okay and this is one of the partnership i think you already enjoy many kind of project like this one uh, i will show to you one of the activity from the school eh? school children uh, one of the thing because we have a lot of activities around the school teachers and the school kids they joining our program in Johor Bahru and Kuala Lumpur but also they enjoying some kind of uh, 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 you know monitoring on the trees itself like for example this a kind of campaign and initiative this is a lot of things we did so far uh, for a few years and then this is still continue but MCO is reducing and limited uh, limiting our uh, resources to do on uh, you know uh, on physical aspect but what we did last time this is one of the projects if you look sorry if you look here this is the activities on planting the tree and the school children is actually uh, working with us right so all is actually we bring school school kids school children to come and joining our program in inside the campus and we ask them how to planting the uh, you know properly what exactly the best uh, uh, you know solution for that how to do the tagging how to monitor from the handphone so this is something what we did and maybe we can do later on with sjkc who choose to maybe soon right and this is one of the campaign that we did and also we have a student NGO student who are working on the clean your plates and climate change warrior and this kind of group already established European partners they already have China uh, student to come and join with us so this is what we call it as a partnership so maybe this is something like your school can create and do a kind of benchmark with others so maybe you can uh, do synergize with other schools right so maybe this is benefit and when they come to university for example in utm we provide them the e-bike this is actually the e-bike okay this is a pedal assisted uh, electrical bicycle for them to you know pedal assisted then they can travel around the campus very very enjoying and relaxing so this is something that we have to bring uh, our mindset clear that what we have to do in the direction when we are projecting one of the projects or activities and this is plugging activities i think you still remember the words plugging means you jogging you jog and then you pick up your rubbish around you so that's we call it as a plug plugging program and this plugging program we uh, uh, manage uh, uh, every year in our campus but since uh, mco we cannot do and but we still need to do that one because there's so many others volunteers to uh, you know they still ask me whether we want to continue the plugging i said that why we we still need to do the plugging because our campus is very clean and beautiful because there's no one there so it means that they are very passionate right to be at that particular environment for example and this is one of uh, please listen to them This is inside the campus. This is first time in Malaysia. Yes. Okay, 
in Japan? You do the same like this? No. 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 Wow. So in Malaysia. Oh. Malaysia first time. Okay. Say goodbye to all. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again. Bye bye. Okay, that's uh, the things that maybe you can give a very uh, good aspect. And this is uh, one of the final activity that we do and we practice until today is we call it as a clean up beach program. You can see that uh, this is somewhere in Desaru and Tanjung Sedili. Last time we managed to engage with, you know, certain ways, uh, SWM, uh, those Coca-Cola also sponsored us. Uh, there are some other NGOs coming and joining with us. Uh, this is something like very uh, interesting part if we can join activity like this one, right? Because we know that in many other beaches, in many places in Malaysia, they're having this kind of problem, right? Rubbish, floating that rubbish and also those kind of plastics. So we have to do something and we do some community engagement pro project. Okay. Uh, I think that's all from me. So, but before I end this session, right? Uh, the most important things for us to understand here, because you are not alone. We are not alone in this planet. Even you are thinking that, okay, I stay, I stuck in my home and nothing that I can do. Actually, you have to do something because the planet needs your uh, contribution. Even it is a very small part. If you go to our website, if you go to our Facebook and Instagram, you can find a lot of project and activity available there. But on, not only to this one, but you can look into the SDG, as I mentioned earlier. There are so many other poor country, uh, the uh, very talented uh, student who actually try to do very innovative projects in order to make it the conservation of our planet. It means that in reality, this is a very extensional to all that to practice zero to hero is very real so by that i would like to thank to all the listeners to the audience to listen until the end so that's all so now i'm back to moderator thank you very much okay thank you dr fadil for his wonderful informative speech and his interactive games so i think all of us uh, was very uh, having fun with his uh, Kahoot and also the Slido. Slido. So we are now going to answer your question. So as a reminder, you can still submit the questions to the comments in the chat box. Okay, so for our first question from the audience, the first one is, what has UTM, University Technology Malaysia, has done to achieve the SDG goal so far? Okay, thank you very much uh, to uh, the questions because actually in UTM, uh, we already segregate and try to characterize the SDG from SDG 1 till 17. So what we have been done, we are uh, cascading based on the indicator. So uh, we already monitored about 144 indicator already. So it means that uh, the indicator is there. But the question is whether we can achieve or not, we have to wait until 2030. Okay, because the SDG is for SDG 2030. But uh, in order to answer this question, we already done our job uh, to make it the indicator and the relevant in all other activities and program in the campus. Okay. Thank you, doctor. So for the next question from the audience is, May we know which goals is the most important and the most challenging goal for most of the people to achieve in SDG? Yeah, I think this is the very great uh, question from the school children. <laughs> very, I, I'm not so sure who's actually uh, asking this, but I do believe that maybe this is something uh, very clever, very brilliant and very futuristic. Okay, But in order to answer this is a very crucial. Right, when you said about the most important and the most challenging, maybe I can answer first on the most challenging. The most challenging SDG that uh, what we have to do in the 17th SDG, it depends on locality. Like for example, in Malaysia, uh, we are facing in under entrapped economy. We are not very developed economy or we even not poor economy. So it means that the SDG number eight, the decent economy, 
and also SDG number nine is the most crucial and challenging for us to make it a very good, um, uh, you know, relevant for us to to improve so far. Because we need to ensure that innovation, technology must sustain our infrastructure, must sustain economy. Like for example, right now, even the pandemic is actually try uh, make us, our economy is uh, reducing very drastically. So we have to improve that one because we already have the benchmark in 2019. But once the pandemic coming 2020, so it drastically reduced what the achievement, the target that means for me, that's most challenging for us. Uh, the rest, like for example, the SDG 17, SDG uh, 16, and even the SDG on the environment, like SDG um, 14, SDG 15, that life on uh, life on land, life underwater, for example, uh, that one not uh, really challenging, but this is something that priority because this is a resources for us. Uh, this is uh, when you say the most important, it depends to the locality, right? So, for example, like in Malaysia, we are not the uh, country uh, actively producing agricultural. We produce the agriculture, but we still depends to others, right? So, the important for us is to manage the resources. So, in order to manage the resources that we, we have to go to certain, like we call it as SDG 12, for example. As it means that consumption and uh, uh, reduction, something like that. So this is the most important. So as I said, it depends on locality and the country. Okay. 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 Thank you, doctor, for the detailed explanation. I hope doctors answer the question from the student. Eh? So yeah, yeah. the so is the third question will be: Is there any challenges or issues that doctor yourself encounter? when daughter trying to promote or create awareness among the students in UTM, pretending to sustainability? Okay, my answer is very simple first. Means that how do you practice your sustainability in your own school, for example? Because your teacher is very enthusiastic, right? They are very motivated to do these things. So the same things in our campus, in university. It means that we need someone who actually passionate about the sustainability. The first thing, we need the people like this. If you don't have any, any people like this, it means that we are uh, uh, doing something like stereotyping uh, program and activity. We doesn't relate and correlate anything. We just make it the event and activity just because we need to do that one. Okay. So the first thing is that we need a very good uh, passionate people who actually uh, anchor us to do some uh, uh, sustainability. Okay, in our campus, of course, the issue challenges and uh, in order for us to promote and to make sure that people joining with us, of course, same to other uh, school and other universities because uh, they don't think that it is belong to them. They always think that, okay, this is belong to this club, to this association, to this kind of uh, teachers and uh, subject, for example. They don't even think that, okay, if I join these things, actually I contribute myself. I contribute my future myself, for example. Sure. For example, uh, uh, if you are working on planting the trees, oh yeah, because my teacher asking me to plant the tree, okay, I join that one. Or yeah. be because I want to get a certification or certificate uh, 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 after I uh, 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 end up that kind of program. That's all, right. But if they passionate, okay, they will ask that particular teacher, teacher, can I actually join in that one? The things because I want to know how you plant the trees. Because I want to know what kind of trees that you planted the things just now, for example. So this is very simple but impactful because we need those actually students who actually not uh, participate directly but they want to learn first and then they want to practice later. It doesn't matter, it's okay. So in the campus or in the school, the most issues and challenges is to bring the awareness at that heart, not mm -hmm. the heart, the heart. I mean your your hearty, your heart yeah. must be there. If yeah. you just give heart very hard, very hard, so maybe yes. they are very you know uh, okay they can do but one off something like that. True, true. Okay. okay. So we must be passionate to, to passionate. Yes, yeah. must be passionate. Okay. <laughs> so number four, yeah. uh, what should we do to meet the goals of SDG? One of the student asked. Uh, yeah. because for example, uh, example of the word just now shown by Doctor the I think the clean beach, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So so they are trying to ask about what can we do during the COVID situation because okay. we can't go out now. So what okay. can we do? <laughs> thank you, thank you. This is also the the the, the things that I already make it the introduction just now. Yeah. Uh, uh. Actually, I already joined a few international committee who actually giving the same uh issues here. It means that what we have do, what we should do now. Because we have to stay in our house, so we cannot do any things. And even uh, with, uh, by now, maybe the uh, pollution is reducing because there is no industries and there is no other, you know, uh, waste coming to our environment. Okay, right now, the most important things, please remember during the pandemic, in order for you eh, to contribute to the SDG, is your face mask. The first thing, because usually what we are doing, we are practicing the single use mask right the single use mask so what mm. they are doing so they just throw everywhere you can see a lot of throwing those kind of masks everywhere so what you can do what you can practice during the pandemic is to make sure that you dismantle the things tie it up properly and put in a bit that's the the good things that you can do right now mm. and what you can do is please download those kind of procedural about the how to manage our health and also the medical uh, this is we call it as a medical face face mask properly and make it the promotion to others like in your facebook in your instagram that the things that you can do this is fall under the sg12 for example uh, sustainable co consumption and uh, uh, production for example it means we are protecting our resources so means that we because you have to remember those face masks is actually cannot be degradable easily some of them right okay. so when you throw in uh, you, you not throw properly in the bins so it add up to land area so it still remains there and even the viruses the corona virus is still there for a few hours right so okay. maybe if okay. someone pick up that thing so they can infect it but we don't have that kind of statistic. Don't ask me what the statistic. We don't have the statistic, but I do believe that it can infect you. Yes. Uh, so this is something that we can create the promotion. Yes. Very simple. Okay. Mm. Okay, thank you. So for the next one, any future endeavor that UTM has been planning on to conserve our environment? Yeah, uh, not only UTM, I can say because this is a very uh, close to you because Johor Bahru. Okay, but anyway, in terms of uh, conservation of our environment, we have a lot of program, not only with the student, but also with NGO, as I mentioned earlier, with the some of the corporate uh, agencies who actually willing to spend their, uh, you know, budgets in order for them to plant like mangrove trees. Have you tried to plant the mangrove trees? But uh, we have one of the projects, right? For example, uh, to protect because you have to remember mangrove and land trees is different. Mangrove is something very easy to degrade because it is depends to the tidal and also to the salt water. So sometimes your mangrove become dying in very few uh, uh, weeks and few months. So you can even you plant many uh, thousand, for example, but you cannot sustain thousand. Maybe it's up only 200 or 100 uh, plants but no. for the no. land area no problems right that plants is okay because you can go to any area then you can replace the things but mangrove how come you can do that one so in order to do the planning things so we have to make sure that we listen to our few people ngos to our uh, public uh, association something like that. They, they want to do something else so we plan for them like for example mangrove the next one is the river trail if you ever heard about the river trail because we want to protect our river we want to yeah. protect our resources on the river itself so yeah. this is the thing that we plan on that and even in utm we have the blueprint on river trail we already have this in our campus so maybe you can practice to others oh, okay thank mm. you thank you for sharing us your the planning that has been done by utm so it was a great sharing, Doctor. Okay, so we move on to the next one. There are some uh, from Easy Virus. He mentioned that, a uh, Doctor, can we transform food waste into something useful like fertilizers? Yeah, the answer, is very simple, yes. Yes. <laughs> but not only yes, mm -hmm. but you can also transform the food waste in terms of animal food. 
and in the fertilizer plus animal food. Oh, okay. Uh, I put it plus there. So this is actually to make it the additional. Uh, your question there. The okay. answer is totally hundred percent yes. And I put it another plus means animal food. It can be as animal food. Okay. Okay. Mm. So next will be from um, Bavisha. Bavisha. Uh, how can we protect the earth other than recycling, not using the plastic and electrical things? Okay. This is a very uh, what we call that uh, ideal. This is ideal sustainability. It means that, okay, we don't want any electricity. Why? Because electricity use coal. You know coal? Uh, so yes, the yes. coal is actually very non-renewable resources. So we don't want to use the electricity. So what yes. we are doing, we are stay in the forest. For example, we put our house there in the forest. So we build up by ourselves. So we are uh, making our own community. Okay, that's too ideal. All right. In sustainability, uh, we are not actually avoiding the plastics and the things in our life, in our daily life. We cannot avoid that things because it still appears there. But how can we balance it? So in our protecting the earth is to make sure that you must have a responsibility to balance it. For example, yes, of course, if you go to Pasar Malam, if you go to supermarket, the people easily can give you the plastic bags, right? For True. free. Yes. Even for free. But you can say that, okay, I don't want your plastic. I already bring my own. So this is the balance. It means that you can ask for nothing for, from them. Right? Mm -hmm. And the next thing about the electrical things. Of course, even now, we are using laptops. We are using internet. We need the electricity. But some of them, maybe they can balance by maybe, okay, in my house, I'm using a solar. Very small one. Only 20 ringgit I buy from the Shopee. Because uh, during the night time, my yacht can be lightening with this. Ooh. Yeah, using a solar, very simple solar, right? Those kind of uh, uh, fencing lamp, for, fence lamp, for example. They can use that things. That's only 20 ringgit, 30 ringgit. You can place over there. So don't use the electricity from your grids. Use from the solar. Sure. And it's very cheap. Uh, sure. So this is what we call it as to make sure that we contribute, not contribute very uh, drastically, but we have to balance the things. That's okay. That should okay. be okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So, okay, for our next question, I think we shall have our last question. Okay. okay. Our last question. Uh, because uh, the time limits us. Okay. So, uh, yeah. will uh, from uh, Encik Fadil, from who? Uh, this is Cheong Kar Yang, is it? Okay. okay so, he says that Will the COVID-19 pandemic threaten the SDGs, the, the Sustainable Development <laughs> uh, the, uh, Goals? Yeah, it's not threaten the SDGs. SDG is not an uh, entity. SDG is only a benchmark, a guidelines for us, okay? But it will uh, shifting our agenda, okay? The pandemic will shifting the indicator, the target that we already set. For example, that uh, in by 2030, we need to reach, uh, we need to ensure that 50% of our population should be not under poverty, for example. But with the pandemic, of course, we know that, that right now, a lot of people is jobless, they are reducing their income. So maybe because of the pandemic, we, if we want to shift uh, to the 2030, maybe we have to rethink our targets, rethink that whether we can sustain or not. This is the challenge. Another aspect on the pandemic there is because of not only uh, in Malaysia, but in other world, in other countries, for example, like uh, this uh, uh, COVID-19 will also uh, give a lesson learned to the country, like a poor country, they must do practice very hygienic. Like, for example, last time before the COVID-19, even sometimes we are not really bother about our handshake right now we have to bother about the handshake right we have to clean our hands before we touch something so COVID-19 already tells people very hygienic uh, so this is something that maybe uh, point a ponder for everybody and I give a positive impact for the COVID-19 I'm, I'm giving that as a positive impact 
I do hope that I saw that a lot of questions coming in, but I'm so sorry. Maybe moderator, I cannot answer the things. Uh, We understand. Coming yeah. right? Okay, so yeah, it's yeah. up to you. <laughs> okay, so I think that is all for our Q and A session for today. And thank you, Doctor, for such a uh, wonderful sharing. Thank you for your all your answers, your experience that you share with us. Okay, so if you have. Okay. Ah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so if you have any questions that we didn't manage to get today, please do comment and contact us later on. So we will pause a recording of this program on YouTube after the end of this program. Okay, so thank, thank you. you, Doctor, once again. So, thank you. So before we end our program today, I would like to invite Madam Lu Chunghuang, the headmistress of SJKC for New Two. To deliver her speech and to close our program today, Madam Lu, the floor is yours. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Uh, can you hear? So before we end our yes, program yes. today, okay. I invite Madam Lu Chunghuang, the headmistress of SGTC to meet you. Salam sejahtera dan selamat petang. Selamat Tuan di malam PBD, Encik Muhammad Zamri dan Jamaluddin yang dipetua PBD SGC Punyo 2 dan ahlinya yang dikasihi uh, penceramah kita pada petang ini uh, Dr. Muhammad Fadil Fahil bin uh, Mak bin Pensyara Akuti per uh, kejutut Kejuteraan Awam QTM. GPK-GPK sekolah, guru-guru, uh, murid-murid khasnya dari Punyo 2 dan amnya dari seluruh daerah Johor Bahru. Bersyukur kita kerana pada petang ini kerana dapat uh, mengikuti ceramah keles, pendidikan kelestarian daripada uh, doktor tadi. Pihak sekolah ingin mengambil kesempatan ini untuk mengucapkan terima kasih kepada PPD kerana memberi keyakinan dan sokongan sepenuhnya kepada sekolah untuk menganjurkan uh, ceramah dalam talian pada petang ini. Uh, untuk maklumat semua, Selama petang ini adalah sebagai uh, kita ialah sebagai uh, dalam uh, peringkat daerah Johor Bahru. Jadi murid yang dapat maka 70 ke atas akan dapat sijil ya yang tak dapat maka tak dapat. Okey, saya juga mengwakili penganjo untuk mengucapkan terima kasih kepada doktor Uh, kerana sudi berkongsi pengalaman dan ilmu dengan kita, perkongsian beliau itu amat menguntungkan kita dan kita tahu dengan penting begitu pentingnya, okay? Uh, untuk keindahan sekolah kita kena menjaga alam sekitar dan kesejahteraan bersama. Taniah juga diucapkan kepada semua cikgu-cikgu yang telah berjaya menganjurkan drama petang ini. Akhir sekali saya ingin mengingatkan semua cikgu-cikgu dan murid-murid semua uh, mesti uh, pergi online uh, Google dan jawab soalan supaya jangan lepaskan peluang untuk mendapatkan sijil daerah Johor Bahru. Sebab ini peluang yang sangat berharga. Jadi, uh, akhir sekali, salam kepada saya. Terima kasih. Thank you, Madam Lu Chunghuang for her inspiring speech. Once again, I would like to thank our organizer, Mr. Muhammad Zamri, our headmistress, Madam Lu, and Dr. Fadil for his interesting speech. And thank you all of you for still 
here supporting us in attending the program conservation of our planet from hero from zero to hero so all the participants now can start to fill in the registration form given in the youtube and the zoom so uh, for this e certificate a reminder as uh, mentioned by our headmistress only those who can answer or score 70 percent and above will be obtained will be able to obtain the e certificates so on behalf of sjkc from u2 and utm university technology of malaysia we would like to thank you all once again for joining us today and have a great rest of your day take care and stay safe everyone Thank you. 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 Thank you.